following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. The opinions expressed in this program are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of Fairfax County Public Schools or the Fairfax County School Board. What is cultural competence? What does it look like in our classrooms and administrative offices? And how do educators establish and maintain effective relationships with those whose experiences and beliefs differ from their own? Join us as Dr. Daryl Craig explores the answers to these questions and explains their connection to closing the achievement gap. Welcome. I'm thrilled that you could be here for this presentation of cultural competence. My name is Daryl Craig, and I'm the program manager of Fairfax County Public Schools College Success Program. I'd like to thank my colleagues from Fairfax County Public Schools for being here this morning, taking time from your busy schedules to be here. And I'd also like to acknowledge a few individuals um, in the audience as well. I'd first like to welcome my sister, Colleen Jennings, a professor of theater at American University. I'd also like to welcome my dear friend, Dr. John Brown, who's director of curriculum and design for Alexandria City Public Schools, and his colleague who's here with him this morning, Jody Peters, who's the avid director for Alexandria City Public Schools. When I started developing the presentation, I thought, well, it would be fun to just check the paper that I read regularly, and for me, that's the Washington Post, to see if editorials, cartoons, articles dealt with issues of race and culture on a regular basis. And what I found was almost every day I could cut out an article from that newspaper that pertained to issues of race. I learned while I was developing this presentation, for example, that in a maximum security prison where some of our scariest citizens reside, these are really violent um, individuals, they have reduced behavior issues by some incredible percentage simply by introducing <coughs> As Asian meditation techniques to the inmates in the prison. I also learned that in some of our elite military facilities, we are training our naval officers, our army officers, not only to be U.S. naval officers or military officers, but global military officers because they're learning languages like Arabic and Urdu. Here's what I plan to talk about over the course of the next 60 minutes or so in this presentation. I'm going to talk about what cultural competence is. I'm going to define it, because that's a term I'm going to bandy about a lot over the course of the next couple of minutes. And it's going to be important for us to be singing off of the same sheet of music and understanding what I'm talking about when I use that term. Then I'm going to share with you what I believe to be stages of cultural competence, the steps that are necessary in order to feel more culturally competent. After that, I'll talk a little bit about what I like to call Daryl's daily demonstrations of cultural competence. I was determined when I did this presentation not to leave uh, the information in the theoretical or philosophical stratosphere, but to bring it right down to everyday observable behaviors that we recognize in ourselves and others. And lastly, I'll wrap up by talking about next steps, because I found when I gave this presentation, lots of audiences would say, this is well and good, this is interesting information, but what do I do next? I always like to start this presentation by talking about two issues, and that's confidentiality and perspective. You know, this is a tough topic. We're often not comfortable talking about it in public settings. And yet, I want people to be able to leave uh, the presentation and go back and talk about it with friends and family members. That's sort of how you pay it forward. That's how the idea or the concepts that I share with you uh, kind of get spread. And so what I decided to do was instruct or encourage uh, participants to please share what you learned, share what you heard, share what you said in this session with friends and family afterwards, but don't feel as though you have to attribute a particular comment or phrase to a particular person, because that's really not important. What you said and what you heard is important, not who said uh, a particular comment. So I would encourage you to keep that rule of thumb in mind. The, also, uh, the other thing that I also like to share in this presentation has to do with perspective. I find it's very important for my audience to know that what I'm sharing with you uh, today is my truth, not the truth. If you find what I'm saying in this session resonates with you, that you've had similar kinds of experiences, wonderful. And I hope that it enriches and uh, uh, helps you in terms of your, your professional and your, and your personal life. But if we find what I say somewhat insulting, 
Um, if it does not resonate with you, if you can't relate to it, leave it right here. Don't take it with you and give it to me with both barrels in an email or in an evaluation form. <laughs> so I'm not trying to lecture. I'm not trying to instruct. I'm simply sharing some information from my personal experience that I hope you will be able to uh, connect with and use. Okay, I'd like to get started by first defining culture and cultural competence. If you were to ask an anthropologist his or her definition of culture, you're liable to get one definition. On the other hand, if you were to ask an artist, a sculptor, a dancer, what does culture mean to you? You're liable to get a different definition. The definition that I gravitated towards for the purpose of this presentation is from Terry Cross, and he defines culture as integrated patterns of human behavior and lots of different kinds of human behavior, communication, thoughts, actions, beliefs, of a group of people. A group of people grouped based either on race, ethnicity, age, sex. But that's the definition, and granted it's very broad, but that's the definition that I think fits the purpose of this presentation this morning. And I thought it might be fun, given that broad definition, to list all of the cultures to which I belong. And I came up with 16 different cultures. I belong to the U.S. culture because United States is stamped in my passport. I put my hand over my heart and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I celebrate the 4th of July. I live in the United States, and most of my family was born and raised in the United States. So clearly, I'm a product of U.S. culture. But I'm also a product of African culture because on my mother's side of the family, we can trace our ancestry back to slaves who worked on plantations in Savannah, Georgia, and South Carolina. I'm also African-American, and I know that I'm part of the African-American culture because of those very, those first two definitions that I gave you of the cultures that I belong to, U.S. and African. I'm also part of the Caribbean culture because my father's family is from Trinidad, and I always say, and I have the gold bangle to prove it, and those of you who are from the Caribbean know what's meant by that. I'm also an educator, and I believe that that's a culture, and I tell educators all the time, you know we have our own lingo that we speak, our own alphabet soup, our own protocols that we follow. I'm a female, and lots of folks from Susan Sontag to Deborah Tannen have spoken about the differences between men and women, the way they communicate, who holds the remote, who stops and asks for directions. <laughs> we notice those kinds of differences between men and women. I'm married, I'm a mom, and I'm a baby boomer. And I'll be talking in just a few minutes about the important role that uh, birth uh, dates and generations play in cultural competence. I'm a tennis player and I'm a swimmer, and I think if you play a sport, you belong to a culture because there's certain equipment that you use, certain language and certain rules that you follow. And I'm left-handed. Anybody here left-handed? Okay, I see some hands going up. You know what it's like to be part of the left-handed culture. You know what it's like to go into a bank or go into a supermarket and have to try to use that blasted pen that's affixed to the counter <laughs> and go through all of those contortions. So we're part of a culture as well. I'm a northerner, and usually when I say that, that's exactly what happens. There's a silence that comes <laughs> over the audience. And I say to folks, you know that there are issues of north and south that are still playing out in our society today. Uh, my husband is from New Orleans. My family is from New York City. And I assure you that issues of, of north and south play out around my dinner table every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. I can count on it. You want a pen. Do you want a P-I-N or a P-E-N? And both sides are equally obnoxious, I, I want you to know. I'm from the East Coast, and similar to North-South, we tend to stereotype or attribute certain characteristics based on the part of the country that they come from. You know, people from California, they're kind of from La La Land. People from the Midwest, hard scrabble, know how to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. And last but not least, the last culture that I identified for myself is I'm privately spiritual. I do not go to a particular building on a particular day of the week to worship. And sometimes that puts me a bit on the outskirts of the African-American community because, as many of you know, the church is a very important part of African-American culture and traditions. And it's not uncommon for me to run into somebody in FCPS and they'll say, Oh, I know you from somewhere. I can plate your face. I don't know your name. What church do you go to? <laughs> and I say, I don't go to church. And the reaction that they give me, it's sort of like they're saying, didn't your mother ever tell you a better answer to give when somebody asks you that question? So we're going to take a break. And when we take a break, what I'd like you to do is make a list. It can be a short list, not as exhaustive as mine, of all of the cultures that you belong to. And when you're done, share that list with the person sitting next to you.
We gotta start by allowing those conversations that will allow us to get to know each other a little bit better. This is what cultural competence is all about. It's about understanding, respecting, talking about it, not feel, feeling intimidated by the conversation.